I want to set the record straight and find out which of these 18 types collectively contains the most bangers. What roster of a specific type has the best pound for pound lineup of aesthetically gifted spherical comrades? So I figured the way to go about this would be to tally up all of the bangers and all of the clangers of each individual type, dual types included, and then using the total amount to calculate what types have the best and worst ratios of good and bad designs. Easy enough, right? Because all I really did was divide every Pokemon into three simple categories. I went through all of this with my immediate gut instinct and face value opinion of each design, and my gut loves to flip so often, that's why I made the middle tier exist, because there's so many designs where I'm on the fence and have to really think about where I would rank them. If it's not immediately noticeable how good or bad it is, and I really have to debate with myself, it doesn't deserve to be placed in either of those respective tiers. Because when a design is good, it just clicks in your head, and when a design is dead, it's gonna check off the same nodes in my brain that set off when I've tried to watch Big Mouth. Okay, I'm- nah, I'm exaggerating. None of them- none of them are as bad as that. Pokemon Quartz has better art direction. Crabominable is more pleasing to the eye. It's probably funnier too. And that's probably the most factual thing you're gonna hear from me in the next 10 minutes. Because this video isn't facts. It's not fact in the same way that I can't factually prove to you that purple is the best colour. But at the very least, it should give a broad judgement of where each individual type stands aesthetically. And I've gone through the effort of doing all 18, the top 9 for this video to suss out which individual type has the most airtight group of designs. And I'll be back for the rest of you clap types in another video. I'm starting out with mathematically the ninth best set of Pokemon designs. Based on my gut instinct anyway, yours might be different, and it's going to the fairy type. So for context, when I say mathematically, let me explain properly for once, not just assume you already know the inner mechanisms of my table varnished smooth brain. There's 65 fairy designs in total, and I checked off 33 of them as being B grade or higher. Divide those two times by 100, you got 51%. So by my merit, over half of all fairy type designs are bangers. It's looking good for the boys in pink because compared to that I only counted about 12 that I actually felt mugged off by looking at which means that on paper 51% of fairies are good 18% are bad so that difference in good to bad is 33% and that's pretty good especially once you find out the absolute state of some of those lower nine types so that's what I mean when I say I'm ranking them based on the difference between good and bad designs fairy is packing a really solid set of designs overall it's the kind of type that really allows the designers to smash out their creative freedom a bit. They really stretch out their creative legs with fairy. They can design a fairy based on something that spawned in the corner of their room during sleep paralysis. All the way to designing the sponge cake they consumed far too much of before bedtime that triggered their sleep paralysis. It still has loads of potential too. We've only really seen three generations of fairies. Because everything before Kalos, and they don't count, they're just quirky pink normal types. So it's at a bit of a disadvantage with only three real fleshed out generations of existence, it gets far too outmatched by the elite types that have been bangers since day one. Ground took me by surprise here. The 8th best type that I came down to anyway. Why am I shocked though? The element of choice for the Don Giovanni himself. His inner circle, it must be a horde of yes men. No one's gonna tell him his tailor has been mugging him off for 20 years, suggesting that kind of drip. But there's no arguing against the red level Cantonian threat to homeland security sitting in his breast pouch. It does make sense that Ground has so many bangers when you really think about it. At face value, it does sound really boring, doesn't it? You know, military grey, Rhyhorn boring. You'd think it'd be one of those types that's a creative clamp on its designers, and it can be at times, but it's such a shift puller in game as a secondary type, so oftentimes it gets combined with other more creatively dynamic typings. So you're definitely gonna get the clapped looking bow toys, but at the top of the chain, you're gonna find the Garchomps, the Gliscors, the Crocodiles, the Golurks. Even Sandshrew is about as base form ground type as you could ever spawn, and that design is clean. So there's no one. Under 45 out of 81 of these designs are worthy of the upper bracket. Only 17, I'd say, start to dip below the D grade based on my mental mark scheme. 56% good compared to 21% bad. It's pulling a slightly better ratio than Fairy. Not by much, but it's quite impressive given how unimaginative the element of floor is in comparison. <laughs> Out 
At first, I thought Dark would easily be one of the top design types, especially when you think about what Dark types come to mind. Umbreon, Crocodile, Scrafty, definitely stacked enough where the good far outweighs the bad, but it's easy to gas yourself up with the good ones that you seem to forget for every two Houndooms, you get like a Nuzleaf or a Vullaby. I don't know how many blocks of cheese you need to eat to see Guzzlord in your sleep, whatever that's meant to be. With a bit of selective memory, you'd assume it'd be in like the top 5 easily. It's not too far off at least, being 7th by my judgement, and 45 out of 74 worthy designs, with only 16 of them dipping into the bad bracket, that's still a good amount with 61% of unwasted space, and only 22% of dodgy dark creatures. So it just edges out ground and fairy, with a 39% gap between the good and the bad. Electric and Steel, they're almost neck and neck. I'm gonna throw them together as a little package deal segment. They both have 73 in total. Maybe give or take a form or two that these tier sites haven't updated yet. And with that, they both have around a 48 to 49% difference in good and bad designs. On paper, there's a few more good electric type designs, but there's fewer bad steel types. So they kind of balance each other out. It's gonna go either way. Every mon matters here. Because this is where the middle tier actually comes into play. For electric types, the indifference tier only makes up 23% of the 73 in total, compared to 30% of steel type designs. So based on that, I think I'm gonna say the electric type just edges past steel. But all in all, both of them are two top types for designs with some slight setbacks that keep them from competing with the Elite Four on this video. Electric gets held back a bit by all of his Pikachu clones, and steel, you get held back by, I don't know, maybe, maybe taking too many creative liberties with how far you can go. You know, some steel types end up looking a little too physically busy for my taste. Fire is a type that just by default has a clear cut advantage over most other types creatively. If the element of your battling creature is fire, you're gonna have to look the part, you're gonna have to fit the bill of being a deadly arsonist. You're so much less restricted designing a monster that revolves around something as volatile as fire than you are a type based around the sustenance of livestock. So fire is top 4, as expected I feel. Even purely just having its numbers wedged up by Charizard showing up several times in a fake mustache Alone. Say what you want about them. It's overrated, definitely, but you're lying to yourself if you think it's a dead design. I don't know how you could put any of the Charmander line below a 7 out of 10, really. So with 86 in total, 60 are bangers. That means 70% of fire types have solid designs, 13 are C-grade standard, and 13 are Sideman tier. So they both each make up 15%. So that leaves you with a 55% difference between the ones packing the real heat and the lukewarm Nummel squad. <laughs> Now the fighting type. These weapons caught me off guard. Maybe I've just got a little case of the Vinny Max syndrome. I see a turbo masculine meat castle and I walk right in the front doors every time. I wasn't expecting the fighting type to be this stacked aesthetically. I mean, I get that bodybuilders train and juice their whole lives for the exact motive of being aesthetically stacked, but I didn't think that'd be enough to pull the entire horde of MMA versed Pokemon into the top three ranked collective designs. Kind of like the ground type, fighting is backed pretty hard by being creatively fused with other types. Fireworks, poison works, even the puny insect type that got on that egg whites and crapped flights lifestyle, even they work. As much as I roast them, even Lucario kind of works. Completely over gassed and hyped Mon, but I can say it's objectively sound enough to just scrape into the B tier territory. Even the ones I feel neutral on, I could easily flip and put them into the upper bracket if I stare at them for too long. Man, I see Makahita giving me them eyes trying to convince me to open up Photoshop, crop them into the big boy tier. But um, I'm too lazy. So with 78 slices cut from this collective beefcake, 55 of them are elite enough for the turbo tier of the upper bracket. That's a solid 70% of visually pleasing vascular designs, with only eight that I rate into the dead tier. They're at the bottom of the list, talking about isolation tanks, doing kettlebell lifts with their canines down the CrossFit gyms, but luckily only 10% are doing Doing that. So that's a clear 60% difference in the good to bad, worthy of top 3 contention. Because on paper, fighting types aesthetically, they should just be swollen normal types. Just a blown up version of arguably the most bland type to form a design out of, if so many of them are good. <laughs> Mm. 
with the dragon type. You always know it's a main event type. It's always in the upper bracket of the Pokedex. Gets the pseudo legendary stats. So it only makes sense that you give them some wedge designs to reflect that pseudo mythical power. There's always a lot of hype surrounding every generation's dragons. I feel like they're designed with merch on the mind. Not necessarily plushies and all that, but more something you could always reliably put on the front of a poster or slap on one of those comically large holo cards. As rare as dragon types were meant to be, there's still 73 of them. 54 of which are lethal designs, meaning that based on my perception, 74% of all dragons are aesthetically pleasing on the eye. Three out of four times you see a dragon, it's going to look good enough for you to want to absorb and contain in your pockets. There's only an 8% chance that's going to end up being something that you want no part of. Only six bad designs that make you want to send them back to the shelf for the fiction section, but that's okay. It's only an exclusive select few because that quality gap is massive. A wham 66% gap in quality from the top dragons to the dead dragons. <laughs> Now you already know, the undisputed premier type if we're talking about designs, you could have called it, it had to be in the top three at least for anyone, not even just my gut instinct and my subjective tastes. No one is touching the ghosts. Who would have thought that the type with the least physical forms would have the best forms of all the pocket men? It's arguably the most creatively free typing so it makes sense. Like what are you even restricted on here? Oh it has to be purple, it has to be mildly spooky, <laughs> yeah mate, hand over the whack boss man i got this could design with that template for decades scooby-doo's been doing that since the 60s and on the daily people still say <laughs> I hate Scooby impression. It's a concise, streamlined 65 in total, with 54 that bang. Ghosts have an 83 success rate of looking buff to me, and only a 5% chance of turning me away, with three that are worthy of the D. Hooper looks the most clapped to me by far, and I don't rate Calyrex. I don't even know if that's his name, I'm guessing it. I'm downloading the DLC. But collectively, there's no argument about ghost types having the best designs, and I'd be surprised if almost everyone didn't rate ghosts within their top five in this context because for me ghosts win this by a massive gap a 78 percent difference in separating the good and the bad here and from the looks of things ghosts are gonna reign supreme at the top of the aesthetic food chain for many more generations to come mm.